Oh. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Chris Adams and I'm with the Forest Service. I've been an archeologist with uh, Forest Service for 26 years now. Uh, but before I started with the Forest Service, I worked in Arizona at a variety of sites over the years. And one thing that became interesting to me was the use of feathers incorporated in designs. And so my first work in the Salado area out around Phoenix, I used to look at some of the pottery and go, boy, the feathers are interesting in some of these concepts. Later, when I moved to the Springer Rill area, I started to notice it a lot more in the, what you would call Zuni glaze wares and stuff like that. Uh, moving to the forest side of it, uh, I've been with the uh, Gila National Forest 14 years. Um, I, have, I work out of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and so I have the Black Range in Wilderness. And so I usually use this concept. I have uh, Apache in the front yard and members in the backyard. So when I travel back and forth. So what I wanted to do to, or this afternoon was to talk about some of the imagery that I've seen uh, that has interested me in, in, in the members' pottery. And so uh, some, there's been a few pictures that Danny had that you're gonna see and hopefully, let's see if this is gonna work. It is not clicking for me. There we go, wrong button. So uh, to start this talk, uh, Danny had a map. Um, I have a map similar. I don't have all these sites that you're gonna see some of this pottery from. Uh, this map is pretty much uh, kind of the center in the Northern part of the Gila National Forest where I've been doing work on other aspects of the membrus. And so what I'd like to do is just to kind of get into some of the things that I'm seeing in the members pottery. And uh, I would like to start, uh, a lot of these images are both museums, the Nan Ranch here at the Western uh, Forest Service has a few pots, uh, but the majority is coming from the MIM site. Uh, it's a pottery where I call it the warehouse where everything is stored basically that archeologists go to. And so you'll see the MIM PID number. Uh, but what I'd like to do is to talk about turkeys because each of these vessels is a turkey. And one of the things that I noticed early on and when Danny took over looking at the NAN collection was the tail feathers seemed to be very represented and a unique style. And so looking at that, I was like, could one actually see that this is turkey versus raptor, songbirds, that kind of thing. And so I have a lot of work on my table with the black fire going on. So uh, I, I had very little time to play at this when we talked about this presentation, if I would do it. And so these vessels that you see here are a unique uh, blend of illustrations of turkeys. And I will say that after looking at about 600 different vessels, turkey is probably the most prominent bird in the members pottery followed by swallows. You have a few raptors and various things, but uh, the style of the bird uh, is unique. And uh, there, when you look at it, there's some similarities here. And let me move up on some of the feathers themselves. You know, when you're looking at this, and what I've done is I've just kind of blown up the, the tail feathers. <clears throat> and the tail feathers are probably the best way in trying to figure out what type of bird you have. And so with this, I like the one from Swartz Ruin right here, this one, and I think the other one was from Galaz Ruin, in which uh, it very descriptive in showing the bird. Uh, and basically, in the next slide I have here, it really does a good job in showing when you look at a turkey, especially down here in the swartz, you have the snood, the waddle in the beard. And here's another example. This is from a private collection and the beard on it. And this is probably one of the better bowls that exhibits what a turkey looks like. There's no other bird that's gonna look like this. And so, you know, when you're out there looking and the first thing you're gonna ask yourself is, why are they representing and showing these turkeys? Well, it's pretty important. If you're looking, uh, Danny kind of talked earlier about the turkeys that they were finding at Elk Ridge. 
And we think that uh, we had some bones there that were broken and healed, which tells us these turkeys, they were taking care of them. They weren't eating them, they were using them for the feathers, which is very important. So with that said, you know, these uh, 30 vessels that I looked at, uh, basically these, they're showing this for what reason, probably showing what they have there in, in, in the Pueblo itself, uh, showing the different activities. I love this one where they're actually eating the centipede and you know, what some of these actually have the, the snoot on the top of the heads. Uh, my understanding talking to my wildlife person that both male and female can exhibit these characteristics and the beard can be actually shorter on females sometimes. So they exhibit both of these things. And if you start looking in the collections at the wattles and especially at the snoot on the top of these, basically that's very characteristic. So that it's not another bird that's gonna show up in that. Here's some more examples of the members turkeys. And here you can see the wattle on this, the snoot on top, uh, feathers once again, are looking very characteristic. And when we we're talking about the feathers, they're very elaborate in showing the, the white portion. And then there's a black band that separates that. And I have a slide that shows there's a, a, a warehouse that actually, or not a warehouse, but a website that actually has all these feathers you can do for comparison. Now this tail feathers is different on this one. Uh, you know, it's not, it's showing it's definitely a turkey. You got the snoot on there. You got a little bit of a beard sticking out. This one over here, when I was pulling it out, the neck on it was very exaggerated. It almost looked like an ostrich, but they don't have ostriches back then. And so basically the, the tail feathers once again, um, and, and this is what I'm getting at when I'm talking about the tail feathers. This portion up here, you've got a little bit of white up here. It's exhibited in this picture right here. But these tail feathers that you have over here, you can start to see a pattern where the white is separated by a black band. And then you've got the lines and stuff that are actually showing what shows up on the actual tail feathers. Wing feathers are a little different. These bowls, this one from Elk Ridge and this private collection shows a little detail. This one I think from Elk Ridge actually kind of shows these lines here. It's kind of hard to exhibit multicolors or, or a lot of detail when you've just got black and white. So, you know, you're limited by what the artist can expose, but I do think this elk ridge shows both uh, a really good example of what a wing looks like when you look at what the wings look like here. And then you sometimes get these little dots that represent, you know, on the actual tail feathers. And I'm not sure, it's a little further down. Um, let me see here. I was putting this together last night. So I think I have it a little further down talking about some of the feathers. Uh, some other birds, uh, parrots, macaws is another thing that shows up. Uh, this bowl right here, I, we believe came off the Gila National Forest as part of an ARPA case. Uh, we're still chasing it down. We call it the seven parrot pot and uh, it's in private hands today. Uh, but you can see the actual image of these, the beak, uh, the feathers themselves, very stylized. You could tell just by the design and the shape that these are parrots or macaws. Uh, they're much different than a, a turkey. So they do stand out much more. And so these are just some of the better examples that I was pulling off to show people what parrots look like. And then the Nan Ranch, some of the actual turkey feathers themselves. And so here you've got some tail feathers that I think once again are turkey. These are actually incorporated into maybe some type of um, bull roar or prayer sticks, pajos, that kind of thing, prayer sticks. And so uh, here's a really nice example of two sets of, of tail feathers that are exhibited. Uh, and this is the one that I was looking for uh, to get at. These dots that actually show up in the white on the turkey feathers, uh, there was a paper that was done, or actually it was a uh, Zoom presentation done uh, for Archaeology Southwest, in which a researcher out of Arizona uh, was talking about the use of the dots themselves were representative of the corn kernels that are placed on there as a design element. Uh, and so 
I find that interesting because not all the turkey feathers have that. Uh, it's a very late phenomena. It shows up more in the Hopi, especially as you get into the northern part of New Mexico. And so uh, just the artist difference right here showing a little more detail on that. But I think as you start looking at this, you start to see a relationship and what resembles and what looks like turkeys. Here's another example from Nan Ranch. Uh, once again, you get these circles and I think these are actual feather bundles. Um, and so down here as well. Um, and once again, you've got another one here and that is, uh, that is Nan Ranch itself. And so then we move on to raptors. You know, you, there's gotta be raptors in here. There's gotta be eagles and stuff. They're a little harder to pick out, but they're much more interesting. Beaks are different. The layouts that they show on the wings. Uh, I was going by what the MIMS site has, what they were calling out as raptors, bird of prey. And so these two were the best examples that I could see. Uh, Galaz site. And then the other one is uh, from the Logan Museum, which is this one right here. And you can see that the tail feathers are very elaborate. You know, that one kind of resembles a turkey in a way. But what's interesting is the split feathers here. And Hopi, Zuni, even the Akama, a lot of times in their feather work, they'll show a split and they'll show a little dark dot, a little dimple on the side to represent a bird of prey. And so I see that here on this one, not so much on this one. The wings are very elaborate on this. Uh, I wish there were more raptors to do comparison, but there's not. There was probably only seven or eight that I saw in the collection. Like I said, there were about 30 bowls of turkeys. So turkeys give us a much better chance of looking at things. Probably the most, uh, the, the second bird that is the most popular are the swallows. Coming in today to the talk, I noticed just outside the building, all the swallows that were flying around out here under the eaves. And so it was very interesting. And so you can see tail feathers are much different. Uh, they don't look anything like the turkeys, but it's that shape that you have that is very characteristic in drawing this out. Uh, it's not only abundant in, in the pottery, the design of the swallows, rock art, you can see that pretty good as well. And so I need to do more work in looking at the swallows, but you know, these got small beaks, uh, small eyes, and then this one is very elaborate uh, as far as the designs on the wings. This one has what we sometimes call the Venus cross. Uh, this has got circles on it. Um, I wish I would have put the rock art picture. I have one in which uh, on the ladder ranch where I'm doing research, the Apaches went in and, and actually enhanced the member's design and actually put Apache images on the bird, which I find fascinating. And so I did not put that in there, but here's some more swallows, just to give you an idea. You know, their split tails uh, is pretty much what you will see when they're out there flying around. Uh, this one, once again, this feather, if this was missing, you might wanna look at that as a turkey, but uh, so you gotta be careful. You need more of the bird itself to really start looking at it. Um, I like the idea of actually doing the sourcing of what uh, Danny's been doing. And maybe we could look at these designs and actually figure out if we could get enough samples from all these, uh, how many different potters are making this. Uh, it'd be very interesting. Uh, here's some uh, bird bowl uh, examples. We got hummingbirds here, very small, working around. Uh, the actual description of this pot uh, from the Maddox site says a sunflower. And so there's been some work on this, not much. This one is uh, from the Geronimo Springs Museum in Truth or Consequences. And I've looked at that one and I'm not sure, uh, they have it as a water bird, water fowl. And so, you know, we do have ducks and various other things. Uh, it's much different. Uh, the bulb, bulbous part of the body is bigger. Uh, it doesn't really exhibit the turkey tail fins or the tail feathers. Uh, and it's just, it's much different. Over there, uh, they were calling that a songbird. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're, they love the birds and they're gonna show them off. 
And so uh, very well executed. Uh, here's another Raptor and this one, a private collection again. And like I said, you gotta be careful sometimes if I just only had this, I might be tempted on calling that a turkey. But when you look at the rest of this, definitely the head, everything is different on it. Uh, so, you know, this is a bird of prey. Uh, this style right here, what they call style two, um, they were calling this a vulture. And, and it could be, uh, not a whole lot is known about, you know, vultures uh, being represented, not only in the rock art, but on the pottery itself. And then of course, the other pot down there, you have the herons. Of course, they're eating the fish, long legs, long neck, those are easy to pick out. And so uh, there was probably 10 different herons that I've seen uh, represented in the pottery warehouse, as I call it. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out is uh, Danny talked a little bit about the use of costumes and stuff. And what got me interested in this and the feather stuff was the actual feather itself, which would be this. And at first, um, I was listening to somebody talk years ago, and they were saying that this feather looks like a, a fish that is dead, you know, just, you know, just the, the skeleton part of it. And they were calling it a, a fish, you know, design. And I said, no, that, that's a feather basically showing. And then you start looking where they have the, the members people put in there. These feathers are very prominent when you start looking. This was one of the first vessels that we had out of Elk Ridge on the Forest Service side before UNLV started working. And so, and I believe this vessel right here, which is in private collection, this is uh, from the Twin Pine site. Uh, from my understanding, because in one of the reports that the uh, looter had talked about, he gives a description of a gentleman holding up what appears to be a catfish or something, and above it is a bow and arrow with a, some type of net. And so I think we have this one nailed down as the only vessel we know that has come out that was from a site that uh, New Mexico State University is working on right now. Another thing I'd like to point out on this one right here where these two males have killed this, looks like a mountain lion, based on the paw prints there, is that the feather decoration on this is very unique. And so you usually don't see that much representation of the feathers, but once again, if you start looking at those elements on the designs and stuff, one can start to pick it out. So and I've got another slide here showing more. Once again, here is this figure just blown up a little bit. And just once again, this is a typical members feather some of these actually look like they're either broke or they're bent on purpose. Uh, and you've got this gentleman over, or this individual with another feather. Here's another feather right there. So feathers play an important part in the member's day-to-day -day life. And so I, I find that fascinating, uh, you know, just looking at that. And then looking at arrows. That was another thing that when I started looking at this early on was the actual fletching on the arrow itself. And members are very good on this bowl right here. You got examples of them making the arrows, it looks like. And this is what the arrow looks like. And then the feather itself is represented. It's either open or it's filled in to show, you know, what this looks like. And one of my favorite bowls I've always enjoyed is this one from Galaz right here where that poor bear has all those arrows in it. And you can tell he's menacing from the pain. Oh my gosh, they keep, quit shooting me with all these arrows but you can see all these arrows stuck in it. Here's another hunter right here. He's got something on the back with all these arrows attached to it and he's shooting another bear there. So the arrows are, are fairly unique and one can pick that style out fairly easy when you start looking at this. Uh, more feather designs. Um, this is a, a bowl, uh, the Bradsby site is on the Forest Service and it represents one of the first sites that uh, we had our first ARPA case in the early 70s. And we had the Members Foundation come in and start excavating. And every morning I sit at the desk, I look at this bowl in this picture and I can see this feather design right here. And I used to look at that and say, I've got to do something. And, and lo and behold, I'm standing up here today giving you guys a talk about what I think is going on. And I could be wrong on some of this. So this is just a, a a stab at looking at what I think looks like feathers. You got a little geometric textile design here. Another bowl that is very interesting, and this is a private collection, is this bird that's in this bowl, tail feathers are rather unique. 
uh, you got a wing right here. And then you, the head itself, you'd almost want to say this part looks like the beak, but then you've got, are these feathers coming out of the head on the backside? Very elaborate design right here. I wish there was more of it to look at, but we don't have it. And so beautiful example, the tail or wing feathers along with the tail feathers there. Uh, here you have another example that's from Galaz. This is very reminiscent of a bowl that came out of uh, Elk Ridge, uh, but it had a turkey in it. And uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So I'll stop right there. And uh, Danielle, if you want to, if you have any questions, uh, we'll take them now. But th that's really it for the examples of feather, feather imagery on in members' pottery. Thank you.